Hello YouTube, this is Sir Berculator, and I'm uh, here today to talk about Star Trek with my uh, good buddy. Psychotic Titan. All right, yeah, there we go. It's his first video. So, um, a lot of you don't know that I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Also, Psychotic is too. Well, extremely. Extremely. <laughs> okay, so we don't know a lot about Titan because, you know, this is my channel, so we don't really know a lot about you. We just want to know a little bit of background, like things you like, uh, you know, maybe if you want to go that far and be like, you know, uh, how old you are, you know. <laughs> I'm the old guy here, yeah, you're, but that's it, all right. You know, like I'm 27. I just turned 27 today. And I'll be 52. And, ooh, wow, man. Uh, old and dirt. No. <laughs> old and dirt. <laughs> uh, can you retire from the Enterprise at uh, 52? Uh, actually, you can do it at 38 if you want, but you have to earn enough credits. <laughs> ah, dude, we're way past that. <laughs> okay, so uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm just the average guy. I love Star Trek, really. Um, been watching Star Trek ever since I was a little kid. My first introduction uh, was probably hmm, back in '72, maybe. You know, I wasn't very old at the time. And what was really neat about it is that it was Halloween time. And they played the episode, um, and I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but where they had it went down the planet with the witches and the dungeon and the cat's paw. That's cat's paw, yeah. Yeah. Um, they had all that stuff going on, and I was just fascinated, like, wow, what is this? And it was also around the same time my sister died. So, I mean, I think between all that stuff, Halloween, my sister dying that year and stuff, I think it was, a lot of things were impression, impressed upon me. Hmm. And uh, But then I really liked, really liked that episode, and then I kept asking my mom, what was that? Well, find that show for me. And nobody had a clue. Nobody figured out. So later on, when I was probably uh, between 10 and 12, somewhere around that time period, um, was watching uh, Channel 43 out of Cleveland, Ohio. And there was Star Trek. Mm. And I loved it. It was just every weekend I was right in front of the TV watching Star Trek, having a good time. Friends at school were getting into Star Trek. I mean, it was at that point, it was in syndication. And um, all the kids at school were just doing stuff to that nature. And I just grew up watching Star Trek. There was a period of time there when we moved um, away from up north. Uh, didn't have uh, you know access to it. We didn't. We were in a place where we couldn't get TV signal and stuff. So it was more spending time outside, growing up, getting older, learning about girls, cars, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but then again, whenever I had the chance, when the movies come out, get right back to it, and um, still uh, watch Star Trek today. No, oh, well that's good. Um, you know, it, it's kind of hard uh, to keep up sometimes. Uh, now it's not because now we don't have you know a show yet until what year did they say next year? Next year is uh, the new one. Discovery or is oh, it TV series? Yeah, the TV yeah, series. Yeah, January. Yeah, January. Couple months. You know, because like the the newest movie is like the 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 closest Star Trek we've had, like in the reboots. It, yeah. yeah. So like you know we really it's still far away, but it's the yeah. closest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah. best Star Trek we can get right now. Yeah. Um, but no, some of the background uh, uh, I have with Star Trek actually actually was you, and how a lot of people don't know this, and I don't think you know this, but like uh, you know, I hung out with your son for a long time. Yeah. You know, we went to church together, and the first time I ever met you, you had Star Trek, like everywhere. <laughs> Laying <laughs> around the house, yeah, movies, it TV. Was, yeah, it was just well, everywhere on the TV all the time. So you know, it kind of because I grew up in a house where like you know my dad was more politically drawn and he was into like the old style stuff. So really, that sci-fi stuff was just you know kind of sandiverse to him. You know, it was more about weather and sports and news to him. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. so there the was average person. Yeah, the average person, Alex Jones. No, no disclaimer. But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the thing is, is um, when I first met I like you, Alex Jones. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, go Stop ahead. Stop it. But when I first met you, um, it kind of gave me a sense of like, wow, this guy's really, really cool. Like he's, you know, a little bit older, but you know, because I haven't, I never saw that before. I've never seen an older person that was into something that was like very sci-fi-ish. But at that time, I never watched one episode of Star Trek and, uh, you never showed me an episode, but I was so wanting to watch it that I went home and searched for it. Well, probably because I kept talking about it all the time. Yeah, it was... It that was, makes a difference, too. Yeah, because... What is this? Yeah, because, like, it got to a point where, like, you know, I was like, hey, you know, we're talking about cars, and then you're like, well, on, you know, on Star Trek, and I was like, oh, my gosh, dude, this guy's not going to quit. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what all the hype is, and I watched it. My first episode I ever watched was probably Next Generation. 
and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about next generation in my opinion but um it kind of led me to wanting to watch more star trek and at that time i was about mm, 13 years old and then it started picking up so most of the time when i was watching star trek you know at this time when i was 13 this was like early 2000s you know so we never had like netflix or anything like that so we could catch up on things so mm. it was more of like yeah. "Ooh, it's on cable pause it pause it you know or if we had dvr or here put a v vhs in you know to record it and so most of the time it was me going to my aunt's house and my brothers were more into like wrestling and anime and stuff like that and i was yeah. more of the star trek and star wars type deal um Two biggest rivals, Star Trek. Oh, and yeah. oh my gosh! Stop it. Love to do Star Wars sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, you know, but but the, but that's the difference though. It's because a lot of people they they take those two and they just think it's a war. And I understand the whole star thing, but I like them both. Well, the difference, really, if you think about it, is Star Trek is more of a slower. It's supposed to be, as opposed to the boot, reboot, a slower pace, more intellectual type show or movie that gets you thinking about stuff and thinking about wow could we really do that could is that possible where star wars is the big fantasy fun thing which you know i mean they say well you can never make lightsabers but who knows in the future what kind of technology we'll really have it's like you taking a kid to go to an amusement park and they're like wow there's a bunch of rides and then you take a kid to a history museum you're like look this is like history and they're like, that sucks. You know? <laughs> but then once they once they get older, there might be some kids out there, you know, that are unique, like I was, where I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. I like how they like develop uh, characters. They develop a story to do it, and it's more developed as uh, more character development. Star Wars, on the other hand, it's just this big fun. Oh, this is a fantasy. We don't have to explain anything, you know. And that's like, okay, well, we have, have to explain to, it, a little bit. But. Well, it doesn't have to be grounded in reality. Right. Well, true, which, true, which true. We're talking about next generation at that point yeah. too, but that's another story. But okay, so back to what we were saying about my past is, I grew up that way, and then before you know it, it was me and you just talking about Star Trek. Yeah. And then nowadays, I have so many Trek friends. Um, but well, it surprises you too how many closet Treks there really are out there. Well, I mean, if you're if sometimes sitting at work, I would make a I would make a quote or I'd say, well, you know, I remember seeing somebody say blah blah blah, and they're like, what is that from? And I'd be like, Star Trek. And I'm like, oh, you watch that too? And it's like, yeah. And well, then I remember just speaking of that when I was at work one time, these guys come down from Canada to visit one of my associates, and they said, well, we want to meet Paul, and she's like, why? And he's like, well, because he's a sci-fi Trek guy. <laughs> and they're like, what? And they're just kind of like, what in the world's that all about? You know, so we, you know, had a good chat and stuff, which was really surprising because they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not like it's been hidden. Like, there, there's tons of them. There's really tons of them. The, the way I got my job at my work is because I'm a Trek, you know, and the guy that I usually take care of or that hired me was a Trekkie. Yeah. Like, the, you know, this guy literally builds models, you know, and he goes to Star Trek meetings once a month. Now, do I think it's great Star Trek meetings? No, but, you know, that, that, that's a different story. I think all, all of them are different. Yeah, you know, it's just a thing. So, okay, so moving on, um, why don't you go first? We're going to ask a couple questions, um, you know. Basically kind of, to each other yeah. and then ask from the audience here, too. You know, you could give us some feedback, you know, what your thoughts are on some of these and, and what your take is on Star Trek as well. Um, I think we kind of got into the introduction of each other and what we thought about Star Trek and where we first met Star Trek. Um, and then I think maybe, you know, Sir Burger you did mention that it got you to want to see Star Trek, but did it? Did you watch Next Generation actually get you to want to uh, watch more of it, the other, the other series? And then how do you compare them to each other? Well, when I first watched Next Generation, you know, as a kid, I thought it was great. But now, since I've gotten older... I really don't like Next Generation as much as, like, you know, I liked it as a kid. And I think it's because it didn't stand the test of time that it, I thought it could be. Because, like, you know, it's kind of like now, where people want everything the way they want it back then. And you're like, wait, that that's kind of cheesy. Well, that's how that era was. Yeah. But, actually, it's not my favorite, you know, part of the series. I think, actually, the originals are probably my favorite. Uh, Wrath of Khan, the movie. Uh, actually... I have to put, and, and I might get condemned for this, but I really like Star Trek Beyond. I really, really liked it. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, wow, you know, that's a big thing to say. But the thing is, is why I liked it is because it was something 
refreshing. And it wasn't like, because the last two movies, I really didn't feel like it was being Star Trek. But it was a lot better. I'm not saying it was a great, great movie. I think, well, if, I mean, speaking of Beyond, I mean, let, let me jump back for Next Generation for a second real quick, and I'll jump back into mm-hmm. Beyond. Um, as far as your ne- the Next Generation, to me, they started out either as actors or what they were trying to portray or what the studio wanted to do. They were too stiff. And they weren't loose with each other, like you know, like yeah. you and I are just talk. We talk to each other, or like if you looked in the original series, there might have been maybe the first episode there was a little bit of stiffness, but immediately out the gate, everybody seemed comfortable with each other, relaxed in their roles. These were actors who knew what they were doing, and mm-hmm. I don't know if some of the people on the Next Generation. I mean, even Patrick Stewart said that when he first went in the role, and his all the other people actors said he was too serious all the time. Everybody tried to make jokes, and he was always like, "We got to be serious." You know, that type of stuff. So well, that in, really made it difficult. <laughs> I, well, I understand. And yeah. I like theater. Yeah. But, it, you know, at that point, I was like, wow, I'm not sure I can get into this. Mm-hmm. And then after probably, I don't know, best of both worlds, maybe, it started picking up for me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, it's not doing so bad. Um, but anyway, you know, back to Beyond. I felt Beyond introduced some really aha kind of moments, like mm-hmm. the space station or... If you even want to call it a space station, it was almost like a space world. You know, when you went in there and the people and the effects were awesome, where you could actually see people walking upside down and that type of stuff. Mm. Because their point of view with the gravitation, they were upright. Yeah. So, I mean, there was a lot of cool things in there. I think sometimes when this reboot series, we kind of try, we're trying to draw from things we've already seen. I mean, for me, on the three ep- three movies, the first one for me was the best because. It was it, there was too much introduction, but it was the best because it really laid the foundation. You got to see these people in a different light. I mean, actually, even though it was more of a faster pace and wasn't the the thinking Star Trek that that we all know and love, to me, between the three storylines and the things, it actually was decent. Now, I hate the first one because I don't think there was much originality thought put into it, except for how they wanted to alter the timeline and give everybody a different thing to do. Yeah. Um, the second one, I mean, since we're talking about movies, the second one, uh, not a fan at all. Um, in the know. darkness, uh, they, I think they really blew it in a lot of ways, whether you're talking about, and a lot of people like Benjamin or Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. I don't, um, well, he's more of a period piece kind of yeah, guy. Yeah, he does. I don't where, think he was good for Khan. Well, the thing but, is, is, you know, if you know the background of Bender Cumberpatch, like, uh, he was actually, you know, you probably know him in Sherlock. Yeah. Uh, but the thing and that was, was interesting. That was cool. He was kind of neat. But the that. reason why he did that is because, uh, he actually had the first role. He was actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure my buddy told me this, uh, but I'll have to research some more, so I might be wrong about this, but supposedly his, he, they were wanting him for Doctor Who. Oh, to be yeah. a doctor, but that, Sherlock, that might have been interesting too. But the thing him. was, was I think he took the Sherlock over it because he knew he was like, well, I'm a doctor for a season or two, maybe. Yeah, you know, he's because like, in Sherlock he could actually do more because you're actually expanding the role. But that, and he's got kind of a quirk to it, and I actually thought that was cool. But yeah, so anyway, it's just so you know, so with two, they just there was just I don't know. I mean, there was some neat things in there how they brought out the dreadnought and how they mm-hmm. did that because you know it's an alternate timeline. But I think. As we're looking at this alternate timeline, I think us as purists or mainly original series type lovers, it was very difficult to digest that and to deal with it. I mean, after you watch it several times, you're like, okay, it's not so bad. You know, I can I can live with this. But when you first watch it, you're kind of like, what did I just watch here? Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. The problem I had with the second one the most was actually the ending. Uh, just a big old clap. Of just collapness. It was like, oh, well, it, it's kind of like it reminds me of like a, a recent movie, Batman versus Superman, where at the end it was just doomsday and it was just this big climactic moment and it just ruined the film. But there was more problems with that film than, you know, what Star Trek had, number two. And I think what ruined it was like that big old just action piece of crap that was happening where the, you know, the starship was coming down and it was destroying half of Los Angeles or whatever and, or San Francisco. And it just, took away from a story accent that I really, really thought could have been great. And also, too, is Khan. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Benedict Cumberpatch. And he did great, 
but he wasn't the personality I was looking for. Because if you're a fan of the original con, you know, it was just like, oh, well, this guy's huge. Well, <laughs> aside from the, the person who played him or the character, mm-hmm. I actually think, and this is the only part that I think that was good about that, they actually got the character of Khan right. Where, because if you remember in Space Seed, um, it was like you first wake up Khan and you got to deal with stuff, but there's no, I mean, because it's the original series, you don't get, really get into a lot of fighting. You don't get into so much of, of how strong he is and that kind of stuff. But when you make the Wrath of Khan, now you start to see some more oomph coming out of him, which in... Star Trek in the Darkness, you see a lot of oomph coming out of him and his power and his uh, yeah. his audacity and that type of stuff. You really see a very bold con in that movie. Well, see, even though, like, you know, some of my friends have talked about how to make that movie a little bit more successful than it was, was that movie was a complete remake of Wrath of Khan, in my opinion. Well, it was but, a total tear down of Wrath of Khan. Though. Well, but the thing was, was all they could have done is not had Khan be the protagonist. What they should have had is, like, someone else from oh. his ship being that person that's trying to get Khan out. And that would have been le- leading up to Khan later on. But, like, it just, it didn't, I wasn't too happy after well, I they don't, the theater. They're, Star Trek's bad about hiding the villain or hiding the problem. Mm. Let's take uh, number six. <laughs> <laughs> when um, the really? Undiscovered Country, uh, we, we have Valeris talking to these guys. And you kind of get this feeling, okay, we got a new character here. Uh, how's that going to go? That's probably part of the problem. But yet, when she walks to those guys in engineering and says, don't you guys have something to do? Let's snap to it. And they give that angle to her. You're like, all right, she's the one that causing problems here. You know what I mean? You know right off the bat. It just but yeah. reeked of that. You know, I thought, oh, what a letdown, because I was hoping for some more mystery going into it. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe Star Trek really isn't that way, but I just really thought maybe they would draw it out a little bit longer than that. Well, okay. So... My my second question actually was, uh, what did you think of you know Star Trek Beyond? Um, so yeah, I guess in a, we quick, got a, subject in, in a quick little summary, did did you think it was like? Because to me, when I watched that film, it kind of was they were trying to shine light in that was original, and the thing was was that's what I liked about it because the thing uh, the first two films, the new reboots, the problem I had with it was they had to convince people this was Star Trek. And it ruined it for me. I was like, oh my gosh, we get it. We're Trekkies. Well, what about these new fans? So you could have eliminated number two altogether and still got been okay. Exactly. That's exactly the, the thing I look at. Now, do I like the whole alternate timeline? Yes. Why do I like that? Because it opens up for so many crazy storylines. Because people don't have to... When you have an alternate timeline... It's not the right timeline that those Trekkies are looking at. And, they're, and they have to pick at everything. They're like, oh, well, that didn't happen in the series. No, because this is an alternate timeline. It's free game. And I'm That's fine true. with that. That's you know, true. as a movie as a movie connoisseur, to I see expand, that. As that. To expand the Star Trek horizon, the Star Trek experience, the Star Trek yeah. philosophy, the Star Trek process, yes. I, I understand that. And, and I kind of agree with that. That, yeah, it opens it up. But you know what, if, if you look at the history of Star Trek and you review some of the older manuals and stuff and you review some of the books, which I'm not an avid reader, so I haven't read a lot of the books, but there's so many stories, so many avenues, so many things that we have missing pieces of oh, yeah. that you can have uh, a, a new story. I mean, and not to get in trouble here, but Axanar, for example, you know, was going to go a different route with stuff. You know, those kind of things. People, so there are some people thinking these ways, like, hey, what can we do here? Or some of the other online, like Phase 2, and to be, and it continues and stuff. They're really coming up with these other stories. So not necessarily do you have to set it in one of the series timelines, but you do have material there and thoughts there uh, that maybe weren't picked for stories, that could be could be expanded, could be used. Well, see, that's the other thing that a lot, you know, that that's one thing that I had a problem with this year, was when CBS decided to do that and just was, like, really mean about their rights now. Because oh, you're yeah. having these fans that are making these movies that they're really good, actually, because Continues is actually one of the best Star Trek adaptions I've seen as a fan base. Yeah, well, the last I heard, though, CBS is, is open for talk. About how in, in, in dealing with that. Well, because, because well, they wanted to, they wanted to drop the hammer. They well, said, yeah. "Okay, all right, that's enough." But I think they realize that they can make way more money. Because the thing is, is why why when you do that is because you're letting your fans create 
stuff that you don't have to come up with or pay someone to come up with. Well, but they can also, but the thing of it is, they can use that in the official canon. Yeah. What they're making. They can yeah. say, hey, that's a good avenue. We're going to jump over here on, on one of our movies or one of our new shows that we're going to make or something and say, hey, we're going to connect with that. So people are like, oh my gosh, I want to see both and stuff. And the thing of it is, you know what? CBS and Paramount are missing out. If these fan movies, and they want to make them that good, then they should just say, well, we want a piece of the action. We want to take your stuff and we want to be able to, 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 to distribute it and sell it and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. they can make money off there and they'll, everybody's happy. You have the, the, the fans making it, mm. plus in order to pay for some of the expenses, they could share selling DVDs and such with the fans who are making them and their own corporation. Which is true. There's a lot of opportunities yeah. there for that. But yeah, but it, it, it's it, just it's just hard. It's hard because the thing is is you <coughs> you want me. you want that to happen. And when CBS came out and said that, and they were trying to be like that, it kind of was like, wow, really? Yeah. Do you not want to, our, <laughs> our help and our love? Because there's a lot of neat stories and great oh, yeah. things out there that, you know, and, and this goes along with any show on TV. People send in stories and stories or, or, or not, scripts or whatever, however mm -hmm. the format they're supposed to be in, and most of them aren't picked. So it's like, who's to say there really isn't something good that the new, new writer or a new group of people producing the films and stuff or movies or TV shows that doesn't say, hey, wait, can we expand on that? Well, that's a good idea. Can we put it together with this one? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity. It's just, let's open up and let's say, hey, what do you guys want to see? What do you want to hear from us? You know, as far as Paramount and CBS, and let's take that thought in. I mean, let's go back to the 66 when they were going to cancel in season two. You know, Gene Roddenberry and B.C. Fontana had this writing campaign that million people sending letters to NBC, and NBC had to come on the TV and say, okay, stop sending letters. We got it. We're going to give you another season. Sorry, this isn't Santa. <laughs> we can't yeah, throw the letters right. away. But going back to your question, um, Star Trek Beyond, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a little over the top. But then again, you had that, was it Justin Lin that made it? Well, yeah, the guy that made um, Fast and the Furious directed yeah. it. But the writing, but I like the character development that they're going with. That and the thing is, is uh, what's going to be really interesting in the next Star Trek film that I see is, one, how they're going to write out Sulu. I mean, not Sulu. Chekhov. Uh, Chekhov. Because, you know, the actor died in a freak. You know, a car accident that happened. The freak, because it wasn't supposed to happen like that. Well, you know, and I don't think they necessarily would have to. I mean, if they could get another young actor that is high energetic as Yeltsin was, well, I mean, because he was pretty pretty wired up. If you really well, thought about it, you know, it. he was he was a really good actor because I watched all of his other films that he's played in. Yeah. And the thing is, is he 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 was really good at that character. I'm not gonna lie, he was he was a good pick for that character. And some of them are really good picks for that character. You know, uh, I believe that Sulu is a great pick. Uh, the problem I did have with three with Sulu was bringing the homosexuality thing over. And even George Akai had a problem with that. Yeah. Because it, Sulu didn't need to be that way, in in my opinion. Because I get it. You want to, like, cross that bounds and stuff because you don't. there's no racism or, yeah. you know, any sexism with that. And you're like, okay, well, but the thing is, is why? You, you don't have well, to. Well, I, I think, you know, in this day and age, I think that they, they want to modernize things, and I think that they want to, you know, allow a little bit of that. Because Star Trek, even Gene Roddenberry has always said that, yeah, there ought to be a place for that. Hmm. I disagree with the way it was done in Phase 2 in one of their movies or their shows. Um, but this this one was, I, I was fine with. It was, you know, it was it's showing there. It's like, hey, this these are, these are the, you know, just like us. I mean, there's no, uh, all the characters within the Star Trek realm you know, it doesn't matter whether they're, you know, they're they're uh, part of the LGBT community or whether they're they're heterosexual or whether they're an alien. You know, so everybody has to do different stuff because even with Next Generation, Riker was always romping off with some alien somewhere. It seemed even when he was supposed to be with Troy, and I always got confused about that. Um, so I mean, so I was okay with that. I think I mean some of the character um, profiles that they brought out. I mean, because I thought it was kind of neat. The uh, bones, I thought. Uh, Bones was a little bit better than this one. He was more down to earth. It seemed to me, you know, dealing with Kirk when they were talking about the, you know, I'm trying to think who. I, I always forget that guy's name. Yeah, um, he's done a lot of different. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, because he did. Uh, he he was uh, the new Dread and Judge Dread. Correct. And uh, and he was in Lord of the Rings, and he was in. Uh, wait, he he was in the Lord. Yeah, he was. Nah, he was I, also, I'm not. I'm not a real Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. It's just one. And of those then things. there was. Um, one of the born movies and stuff. He's done a lot of things, and I, and I like his acting. I think he's really good. Mm -hmm. 
I think sometimes it's a little too fast paced for for Bones in this. But then again, they all are younger than oh, what yeah. we, they were in the original yeah. series. So that so the so I'm fine with that. Um, then I don't think we want to use this episode to talk about characters that we don't care for and stuff. But <laughs> we'll leave that <laughs> yeah, for we'll, another episode. We we'll leave characters we we'll don't leave. we don't like in Star Trek as a whole. You know, yeah, there Dif- you go. That way we can cover a longer episode with different series and and that, and oh, that yeah. type of thing. So, but yeah, beyond going back to beyond. Um, the only the only things I really didn't care for when I meant over the top, I thought J Lo was a little over the top, a little hyper anxious or something mm. as a character. I, it it kind of seemed out of place for like the original series type characters or, or people. And then um, that close up of Chris Pine when she starts playing music and he says, "Good choice." I just think that was out of place. It just didn't fit for me. It seemed kind of like. Maybe they meant to him have a like a little devilish look to his eye or something. I don't know, but that to me just kind of weirded me out. Oh, and uh, his name is Carl Urban. Carl, Carl Urban, Urban yes. is, uh, yeah. you know that. But beyond that, did you think it was a good enough Star Trek where you might? It, what I'm saying is, is it's kind of getting it, why I like that film, and some people will disagree. Is I think it's getting it back on track where it needs to be. Well, correct. I think you were going back to the right direction. Mm-hmm. The other thing of it is, even though you're going back the right direction, what will the next movie be about? Will it really be more? I mean, since you've already had three movies of action, what's the next one going to be? If you don't have action, the people who want it for the action, because that's what most moviegoers go today for, is action movies. Well, yeah. So now, does that mean they're going to not watch this? Well, but I don't know. But the thing is, is the director they picked is from Fast and the Furious, so it's going to be like that, that action-paced movie that they want because that's what Hollywood does. They like that action pace because, you know, it, it's just like most of the writers that I've talked about, like Kevin Smith or, you know, Kevin Smith talks about superhero films and how he doesn't, he doesn't want to do them. And like most people are like, why? You're like a superhero comic fanatic. He's like, but every 10 pages is action scene, action scene. <laughs> He's like, film, stop, film, stop. Yeah. Film, well, I think problems. too, if you look at Beyond, like I was saying, the point when 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 um, Bones and Kirk was in the lounge and he was having a drink and he was talking about one year older than when his dad died, mm-hmm. and I think that was one of the slow down moments, get you thinking, that type of thing. And I thought that was good. I think they could have used a few more of those. Well, but you also have to take in consideration. I think this is the first time we had Simon Pegg. And I forget the other person that wrote it. I think it's like uh, something Fong. He, he wrote it too. But I think Simon Pegg wanted to see how much he can put in before people start hating it. And the thing is, is he wants to subtly do it. So I'm not expect. I wasn't expecting well, a lot, but I was I'm, expecting at least a decent change where we saw that. Correct. Hey, and I think you saw way. a decent change. My concern was, why did Paramount believe right out of the gate? That this was going to make less was it because they put it in for a summer blockbuster, which it technically wasn't, as opposed to the holiday season, which it was supposed to have been, and that's why they thought it was going to do as good because they had more bigger competition, or they actually didn't have the faith in it that they should have. Well, I think I think what you need to do is this: number one reason why the first two films were great was because when they came out, they really didn't go up against anything really that great. Because I've looked at it, and it wasn't man, it was all right. But the thing was, was Star Trek Beyond came out. With a lot of stuff coming out. Look at it. You did. Batman versus Superman. Um, Civil War. Captain yeah. oh, America's yeah, right Civil there. War. Right there. You know, you just you can't do this. Because Marvel is a hot fire hot spot right now. Well, here's and here's where I take Umberton at. Why did not Paramount want to release it during the holiday season? Just because of Star Wars? One movie? Was there any other big movies when Star Wars came out? But I, I can't think of really any. Well, but you also have to take in consideration Star Wars is like a huge, huge, way big thing now. Because the reason why is because you can, most people relate to Star Wars because their family and their old, pe- you know, the old family is like, oh, you know, it's this. Because it's that fantasy thing that's like, oh, well, well I don't have to know a lot to know what Star correct, Wars because, is. Well, because a lot of people, and here's the thing too, I think a lot of people feel that if you want to like Star Trek, you've got to you've got to go watch the old series, or you've got to understand all the techno babble of Next Generation. And I think they, and that simply isn't true. Well, I think they plot that. I think that's how Paramount plots that out to be, and it kind of just like, eh, really, come on, you know. But the thing is, is we also had 
This is the summer of flops, though, too. Because we've had some pretty terrible movies that just dropped off. Suicide yeah. Squad, uh, the new Ghostbusters. I don't know what they were thinking of that. <laughs> <Not touching laughs> but that. Sony lost a lot that. of money on that. But there was a lot of flops. And that's the problem that we had. Most of the biggest movies that you saw were Civil War, uh, Captain America, and we had The Jungle Book, which was really crazy, brought in a lot of money compared. You know, a lot of people were like, I don't know about this, but it brought in a lot of money. Yeah. But it's Disney. Yeah, a lot of movies. A lot of, a lot of movies. And Disney has their hands just about everything. Yeah. Today, so. You know, and Disney's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but they know what they're doing. Yeah. They know how to make that money. So moving on to this. Uh, so probably in the right direction. We're kind of on the same page. We like that it's going the direction it needs to be. That's what we want. We want the direction of what we as Trekkies believe that is a Star Trek franchise worth wanting to watch. I don't want to watch a movie and be like, yeah, that was great, you know, because you know how it is, because you're on that hype train because you're a Star Trek fan, and you're like, yeah, this movie was awesome. And then six months later, you're like, man, that movie really sucked, <laughs> you know. But the thing is, is it, it kind of didn't leave a bitter taste in my mouth, like number two did, where I was like, uh, I don't know, uh, this action sequence. Well, that's the thing, too. I don't understand. I mean, if you're a Star Trek fan, you're a Star Trek fan. Now, if you became a fan because of the reboot – that might be a little different because mm. when you're going to see the movie the, the beyond, mm. you know, if you're a Star Trek fan, you're going to go watch it because you're going to go because you want to you want to quit having the the fight amongst all Star Trek fans, all the Trekkies, and saying Trekker versus Trekkie or any of the other stuff going on. You know, what do you want to do and how do you want to do Star Trek? You want to just love Star Trek and you want to go there and you want to show your support. Oh, yeah. So I think if you're a normal Star Trek fan, you're going to go watch that movie. Whether you liked it or not, it's another story, and that's how you got to, you know, you'll deal with it personally or with friends and family, that type of thing. Um, I think some of the people who jumped on ship uh, with the reboot, um, I think some of them might have mixed because some of them have seen the, the series. A lot of them, I've heard say, "Well, I don't want to go back and watch the shows. I'm just good with movies and stuff." Well, that it, you know, technology has changed. That's the big thing that I really, really like now is because Star Trek is being a lot more noticed now because people see it on Netflix, and a lot of people just own Netflix now. And they're like, oh, well, the old, the original's there. Next Generation's completely, yeah. every single Star Trek is on Netflix that yeah. I know of. And I think that brings a lot of people to light because they're like, oh, well, you know, it's here. Might as well watch it. And the thing was, was it wasn't like Star Wars because Star Wars is just movies. You didn't really have TV shows except for like the Clone Wars TV show. And then they were trying to do another show. I think that was like involving uh, Darth Vader's Apprentice, but it became a video game. And you had video games. But the thing was, was Star Trek was not really based on movies. It was based on a show. And people don't, yeah. you know, people people don't get it as much because, you know, a lot of people back then saw movies. They didn't really just sit down and watch TV unless it was like Jeopardy or the news. Yeah, when, well, you know, years past when movies are coming out, you didn't have this easy access to stuff. You had to, I mean, sure, um, the original series went into syndication in, I think, probably 72, probably about the time I first saw it. And then, but Next Generation came out in syndication, which was a first for any kind of show at the time. And uh, that they pretty much, you know, saturated the airways with it. I mean, everybody got to see it. But I think, too, if you look at this through the years, I mean, you had the overlap, so much overlap of Star Trek. I think you kind of um, inundated us with so much Star Trek, it just became, wow, burdensome. And everybody needed a break. And I think the break was good because I think when the reboot came out, everybody was like, wow, yeah, Star Trek. You know, some, something, and they, you know, you knew it was going to be different with J.J. With Abrams doing it. So you're like, is, what is he going to do really? You know, that type of thing. Um, so I think, you know, once you see it, even if you didn't like it, I think a lot of people, if they watched it a couple times, the first movie, um, which I saw, I think, in the theater five times, um, <laughs> and then bought the, the, uh. the, the DVD, so... Um, but you, you got to like it better, you know, because it really was like, okay, I, I can live with these guys being younger and have the action stuff. This is this is kind of neat. Well, so. I think Paramount just brings <coughs> that money factor, which is, you know, that's what pretty much every studio wants is that money factor. They, they want to make that money. But the thing is, is I think people were so Star Trek deprived at that time that we didn't really have anything completely new until that first movie came out. Well, I think I think that's because you, we got inundated for so many years that I think there actually was a needed break there. But if you look at Star Wars in the same respect, I think they have a bigger gap there. And, mm -hmm. and most people take the, the first three prequels and throw them out the window, don't even want to think about it, because I think the biggest fan base, as far as what I've heard, 
and I could be wrong, don't call me this, but the biggest fan base for the new movies was the original three. Yeah. They were like, okay, where are we going with the storyline now? Yeah. That was the big draw. All right, so past that, yeah. um, the next question I like to you know bring up is favorite episode. Favorite like, episode. Uh, out of all the series, TV, you know, or movie, you know, what what is your favorite? You know, I like all of Star Trek. And, you know, as we've talked before, you know, when the Voyager was going on and Enterprise came out, uh, I actually ended up working second shift at my job, so I missed a lot of that. And I still haven't completely caught up. I've seen a lot of the the episodes. But my first love, and probably always will be, will be the original series. And as far as episodes go, I still think um, Sitting on the Edge of Forever is one of the best movies ever made. Uh, for all of Star Trek. You know, not to say that, like, the next generation, I think it was called Inner Light, where Picard gets zapped and loses a, a lifetime in another of another mm-hmm. guy's memories. I think that was an awesome episode. But if you really got to look at it, the, the warmth of an episode along with that, because that's what Sitting on the Edge of Forever did. It really gave you a warmth to the show. And it wasn't necessarily so much the, the, the cerebral technology part of it, but it was just like... Wow, this is nice. This is this feels good. Hmm. You know, and as far as and, and that shows, but you know, I think that I even like that over some of the movies. I mean, you probably could have made a full movie out of that. Um, as far as movies, it's hard to say. It's kind of a toss up on that. I mean, there's so many. I still like the original series set of movies more so than Next Generation because I think at the time I think I was growing weary of Star Trek, and I believe that Star Trek Next Generation at most points was moves it moves storyline moves slower than the original series even mm-hmm. so I think I actually became more of a fan of uh, actually DS9 at the time when it was going on because yeah. it was even though to me DS9 failed as a show but there was a lot more stuff going on there that you could you know pick at and look at and see and do things but I think number I like four and six really. I mean, I love Wrath of Khan, but I think to me, four and six actually kind of bring it home because I think you could put actually put Star Trek, if you really wanted to, in a nutshell. If you took two, four, and six and showed somebody this is Star Trek, I think they would really get an overall of what Star Trek is or the or the, the base of Star the Trek. Basis, yeah. Now, next generation, probably. I don't know if generations would do it or. Not probably generation because if you look at the last two next generation movies, they're kind of way out there. And the thing I hate the transition between the, the I believe it's Nemesis was the last one mm-hmm. with the big Romulan ship. And how did we start the reboot? Big Romulan ship, I'm like oh crap, not this again. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that's one of the things that I remember too was when you brought that up and you're like, Yeah, there's a huge Romulan ship in the beginning. And I was like, they next generation does. <laughs> it's exactly what happened. Uh, but, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, see, my favorite episode probably has to be, I don't remember the name of the episode, but, you know, and then it pops and I'm like, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> but it was an episode where actually Kirk actually goes to a planet and finds this little uh, temple and he gets knocked out yeah. and he becomes this, like a oh god to gosh. these people and they're like native people. And his wife's Miramani. Oh, uh, yes. The Indians. Yes, it's great. It's one of my favorite yeah. episodes of all time. That's probably my second favorite. Just those. because the, 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 the kind of, why I like that episode was it was because you got to see Spock and Kirk being the, the closest friends they could because they were both, wor- you know, Spock was really worried about Kirk that whole episode he's like you know we got we got to find this guy and you know kirk's off you know just being like hey i'm this good <laughs> but uh it's one of my favorite episodes of all time next generation though well my, ne- my favorite next generation episode would probably have to be the time travelers episode where he first starts out and it's the first episode ever where they uh the traveler comes by and an engineer supposedly shows up with him and they want to get to a certain mock Oh, are you looking up oh. the episode? Oh, you're talking about time, the time traveler? The one with yeah. the Crusher and they kind of yep. had yep. like a bonding yeah, yeah, and then it comes to find out that actually the time traveler is the one that was making the ship run the way it was. And it was like 
they they traveled so far that it would take forever ever to get back and they needed the whole time traveler to do that that was one of my favorite episodes for next generation now movies on the other hand i would have to say wrath of khan i'm original i like the you know i love wrath of khan and my second one would probably have to be search for spock you know it's just a lot of people don't like that but i kind of like the film so um next generation films not i really didn't like them i just didn't like the next generation films now the newer reboots yeah i liked one and three that's it but we already went through the three and i told you everything you need to know about three so but yeah i think and i was trying to do a quick search here i'm obviously having the wrong thing to figure out which episode that uh, he went down at the end of the stuff but um well, uh, if you know the episode, you know, you should like put it in the comments. So like later on when we do another Star Trek video that I could be like, hey, look, you know, this guy knew what was up. So, <laughs> you know, but if you're a huge Trekkie, if you're a Trekkie, then you kind of know, like, you'll know, you know what episode I was talking about. I just, I'm not really good with episode names a lot. You know, that's like watching, you know, episode season four episode three was like where the beyond the river flows or something and i'm like i don't know that i just know hey this is the premise of the episode and this you know this is what i like and i think you know that, that that's the thing that i wanted to bring up about star trek is star trek also opened me up to a lot of sci-fi things a lot of just newer you know experimenting on like you know the whole outer space thing and you know being you know not all just oh this can never happen type deal it was more of i wanted to see this and the thing is the star trek a lot of people know this as if trekkies but star trek did invent a lot of things that we use today like that little handy device that you're uh, playing on in your smartphone <laughs> trying to figure this out uh vaccinations it's, i believe it's a paradise syndrome oh uh-huh <laughs> i'm trying to look it up here was it? I think it was. <coughs> Excuse me. I need a new smartphone. I think mine's too slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as smart as uh, yeah, Stephen Hawking. Yep, that's it. Yep. yep. Okay, what is that called? Paradise, Paradise Syndrome. Syndrome. Yep. yep. Well, uh, uh, that's my favorite yeah. episode. I was going to say there. Uh, no, that doesn't sound right. But the other one I was thinking about that messes with my mind is this side of Paradise where Spock gets the spores and he's like all happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, most people that are generic Star Trek fans, like, or most people, they say their best, you know, you know what I hear the most is the best episode? Mirror, mirror. I'll tell you what. It's a good episode. I'm not going to lie. I mean, lie. since we've expanded upon what our favorite ones are, I mean, because that has to be in the, in the top five. Of course. For me, because... I mean, it really was like, wow, this is pretty wild. Think mm -hmm. of an alternate universe. And then when, I'll tell you what was the greatest thing that hit me in recent time was when Star Trek Continues did a show on what happened when the alternate Kirk went back to his yeah, ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, wow, that's my kind of Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, they did an excellent job with that. Yeah, so past that, uh, let's see, uh, you got something else for me? The only other mm -hmm. things I was thinking about, well, we, I mean, we, we probably hit most of the stuff we were kind of thinking of here, except for, and maybe we just use this to close this out tonight, is where do you want to see Star Trek go in the future? What are you hoping to see? What do you, what would you like to have happen? That type of stuff. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, where do you want to see the new series go? But Star Trek as a whole, even, you know, what do you want to see things happen within the Star Trek world? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like the number one thing I want to see is developing a series because like discovery is coming out and i want it to be how you know the thing is is i don't want it to be like the first two movies i don't want it to be this action-packed thing and it just ruins you know that, that that trekkiness that i love of just you know analyzing things and being like oh well you know that was, this story is meant for this and the thing is is i don't like rush stuff and i think I hope that it's not like that. What I what I see Star Trek doing in the future, actually, too, is also, you know, it is a different time period now. So Star Trek is in a lot of, you know, different venues. One, we have video games. We have Star Trek Online. We have Star Trek Timelines on your phone. Uh, so it's going forward. It's just the movies need, you know, three kind of 
like brought that forward a little bit more and i think it's putting it in the right direction because when i watched the first two i was like okay it's all right the first one but the second one really veered off where i was like oh man i'm kind of afraid of this but you know I'm, I'm a huge Simon peg fan as a movie guy that i believe that he's a great writer you know yeah. and I, I think and he's been a tr you know he's a true trekkie yeah. you know so yeah. i think he'll do justice to this and he will bring it to exactly well what as long as be. paramount gives them the opportunity to do that too well i think they showed that they can write it it's just the movie came out the wrong time that that's the reason star trek beyond is considered still a flop but it did make money well they're going to have to contend with this too if you think about this Star Wars is coming out every year for the next 20 years at Christmas oh, yeah. time and yep. the holidays or whatever time, time of year, somewhere similar to that. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah. So now how are you going to compete against that? Okay. You so know, are you going to be a month later? Well, no. Or are you going to go head to head? Because I don't think you can go head to head. Oh, no. It, it, now, maybe a few years down the road you might be able to. But right now, since Star Wars is just kind of so exciting going on, I don't think you can go head to head right now. What you, you also have to take in consideration with this is when you. When you go up against someone that's that big, you know, Star Trek and Star Wars are pretty big, but Star Wars takes the cake because you have two things going on, is a lot of people watch Star Wars. They've watched it in their movies, but their kids are watching it. And, and look at it this way too, is if you walked into a room and you saw a bunch of kids and you had a picture and you had one Captain Kirk and one of Darth Vader... Which one are they going to know? Darth Vader. That's the thing. Disney uses that commercializing to make those movies big because they know they're like, oh well, you know, let's push this in here. You know, that's what that's what people don't realize is like there's a lot of promotion being put into those movies that those make those movies that big. That Disney Disney's well, running that show too. So yeah, but you got to look at it too with you know, and I don't know where. And I'll, and I'll jump back a little bit on that first. But, you know, when you brought up the new series Discovery, well, they come out and said, that, well, instead of episodic, they're going to do it, you know, serial or whatever. Yeah. They, however they do the dramas and stuff. To, you know, an entire year is going to be one episode. You know, and, and I'm the kind of person that's like, you know, I don't need to know everybody's dirty laundry. I don't need to know who's sleeping with who, who likes who, who wants to shoot who. These things get old to me. And to me, the, the, the greatest thing about Star Trek always has been, except for a few slip-ups that they've done, has always been every episode's a new thing. Now, granted, I remember mm -hmm. they complained back in the 60s, well, season three turned in and the monster of the week or blah, blah, blah. And I thought, no, I don't think it really did. But I enjoyed them, every episode, a new adventure, a new episode. Now, granted, do you have to come up with more ideas for that? Yes. As opposed to taking a sh you know a short story and expanding, or taking a novel novelization, that's what they're, they're mm -hmm. going to do with it. Instead of taking that and doing every week's going to be a chapter in that. Could that be okay? Yeah. If 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 you're a person who likes to read all the time and read novels all the time, I'm not so sure the fan base is that way, because I don't think the world is that way. I don't think I think the people who like to sit and read novels all the time, I think it's smaller than what you think. I mean, sure, it could be, you know, two million out of, you know, or two billion or a billion out of the seven billion people in this world. But I struggle with that part, knowing, okay, how are we going to write this out and do this? I mean, to me, it's always, my love's always been, it's like learning the characters through the different adventures, through the different meetings of aliens, mm -hmm. through the different visits to planets, you learn more and more about the characters, their background, their likes, dislikes. Not that I need to know it all, but you develop over time that way. Whereas, if you're going to novelize it, you're going to never know, or maybe you're going to know too much the first year, and they, after that, like, well, where else can you tell, what else can you tell me about this person? Or if they decide to shift somebody, he went psychotic on us, all right, uh, no pun intended, of course, but uh, in, in the second year. So, my, and then that's what I thought too. Okay, if it's going to be episodic, they also said, well, it's going to be a different. Every year is going to be a different story or a different set of characters or something. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, how are you going to do that? Because I thought Star Trek Discovery was the ship. Otherwise, Star Trek Discovery would have to be the name of the series and not the ship. So, you know, I really don't know. And that, you know, that's to me, that's troubling because we're kind of. Granted, they have a plan. 
we're confused about the plan and we're not sure about it. To me, I think you would want your fans to be like, that's cool. Oh, I get that. That's gonna, here's what you're going to do. And hey, I like this. And you're, I don't really see that as far as the fan base is concerned. Now, Grant, I think the fans are excited. Hey, we have a new series. I think somebody, some people were a little put off by the style of the ship, which is an old, old drawing from the 70s of a, of a oh, ship yeah. that they did, which is, you know, I'm fine with. I don't have a problem with that because you know they have difference. But what concerns me now seeing this ship is like we've never seen it in the past 50 years, aside mm-hmm. from some drawings. Or somebody did say maybe there was an, uh, uh, in one of the shows or movies that there was a glimpse of one that was put in 3D-wise. That's possible. I don't know for certain myself. So the question is, is it going to be part of the alternative timeline you brought up? Like, where are they, what are they going to do with this? You know, are they going to be bringing in stuff that we really so, don't want? Like, tying in the movies, though. Correct. Have to try to put a tie-in with the movies. Which, which uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. I wouldn't. They, they act like they don't, they're not going to, but you, but, know. but you never know, though. Because the thing is, is it can make it good, though. What what I'm saying is, is like some people are like, well, I don't know about that, but but you also have to take in consideration it can make two different Star Trek series. You can have something that expands onto the original, and then you have something that expands onto this new universe. You could, but I don't think they're going to do that. I don't well, think it just depends. I think it's going to depend on you know what picks up on this discovery. But you have to realize too is like there's diehard Trekkie fans that's been waiting for this, so they know that the people that are diehard Treks are going to watch it. Now to keep those diehard Treks keep watching it that's the focus that they want well and they've got to look at this too and i'm sure that they've you know pulled people and they've thought about this you if you remember when next generation first came out Mm -hmm. all the trekkies were like there's no way because it doesn't have kirk spock and mccoy (sighs) and you had to get past that but they can't live forever that's the thing but what (laughs) what i'm saying is you had a a big hurdle to overcome and i think after you know i think they did that it took them a few years but they like people were like Oh, okay, this is cool after all. You know, now granted, some of them accepted right away. Others took more time, and, and that's fine. But you're going to have a hurdle here of what's been going on. Sure, you got overwhelmed with too much Star Trek in the 90s, and now you have a span, and you get the reboots, and people are, there's mixed signals, mixed emotions, and now we're going to do a series. And like, wow. And I don't see them coming out to the fans and putting out like, Hey, here's what this is going to be that's so great. Well, let, let's 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 take this as an example. Uh, that period that we didn't have that, and we wanted it, we wanted it more than anything else because we're Trekkies, just like Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans been wanting a new Star Wars movie that was good because well, but they've had so little to work with anyway. We've had a lot of series of Star Trek yeah. movies. So the thing was was when. The new Star Trek came out. It was actually considered like one of the biggest movies at that time, because people were wanting to watch it, and they were like, "Oh, well, you know, it's good." But two kind of ruined it for them. That that kind of lowered their numbers a little bit, and I think that's why when three came out, that and the the time that they picked for three to come out just wasn't right. But Star Wars, on the other hand, is exactly like that right now because Force Awakens. If you really look at it, it's not as good as everyone said it was. It's good. But it, it's not that great. You to know, to of like the first three movies combined or something. But the thing is, is like people want to see that their 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 series is going to that direction. They want to see that trilogy. You know that that saga being like, oh thank God, someone else has taken the reins and it's way better. But you know that's the problem that people do have is when people modernize things, it kind of ruins it sometimes. And you're just like, Ugh. you know, look at Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Let's you know modernize it put some women in oh you're sexist if you don't like that no come <laughs> on people the, it was well but everything, just wasn't... everything's becoming a remake anymore and i think that we need to really this hollywood really needs to look at that and say hey let's slow down about the remakes on everything let's come up with some new stuff well i think what they're going to do now is because now they started to realize that there's two things that can go on with the star trek universe and, and galaxy some... quest oh my that's gosh. what can go on oh here we go hey i'll tell you what i love that alien ship but go on yeah go on. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is even if the Star Trek doesn't do what we want it to do, and it gets canceled, or CBS, we like it, and CBS don't like it, and they cancel it because they're getting low numbers. The thing is, is now we live in a new age where if something gets canceled, someone usually picks it up. 
Well, you that's know. true. I've, I've seen a lot of that go on. And the thing is, is now too, is we're getting a lot of, you know, other people directing and writing different episodes now. Like, uh, let's take, for instance, Flash, the new Flash series on CW. Why it's so big is because you've had big time directors that are huge comic book guys come in, direct it. Kevin Smith directed Flash twice. And people just love him, man. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, <laughs> by the way. But the thing is, is I'm I'm that Star Trek guy that I want to see other takes of Star Trek. It doesn't have to be one set way. That's what I loved about Star Trek when I first started. Well, and I think you saw that with Next Generation because in Next Generation, more per, more people took the helm at producing the shows or directing the shows, rather. Mm-hmm. You had different people doing it. Yeah. So it gave you that that thing there that, that you want to see a difference of, of how it was handled. Well, just but I think there was still, it still had a continuity because they all knew, okay, Star Trek means this. It still needs to kind of go with this kind of flow. Yeah. But they, had, but they put a little bit of their take on it on, on, on some of the episodes. And I think that you could see that. They kept the nature of Star Trek, but yet expanded it in, in the ways that they thought it, it should go. So I'm, I'm just going to say this. I, I like the direction it's going right now. Um, I really don't know if it's the right direction to go, but you know, only time will tell. Well, know. absolutely. But you know, you know, what would you guys think? You know, like, comment, subscribe to the video. You know, if you you want to, you know, ask us any question, you know, just put a comment down there and we'll look it up. You know, uh, but uh, this will be our video today. So thank you for uh, listening. Uh, I'm uh, Sir Berculator and Psychotic Titan, my buddy that was here today to talk. And I want to close by saying, no matter what it is, it's Star Trek. Go watch it, whether it's on TV, Netflix, or in the theaters. Love it. And don't fight amongst each other. Just, just don't watch the porn parodies. No. <laughs> no, God, no. Stop. We're not going there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We love you guys.